This is a super awesome round and colorful LCD module and it could be used for so many projects. In my case I want to give another shot to the homemade smartwatch project, but this time made with an ESP32, Wi-Fi and a color round display. Sounds cool? Today I want to show you the GC9A01 display, working with the Arduino and the ESP32 and check out the connections, what versions we have, some very cool examples and a nice compact board that already has the ESP32 included. That being said, let's get started. Hey guys, PCBWay is sponsoring this video and let me just tell about their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are. And you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better. And to order such PCBs, you only need a few minutes on their website, where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that, you can also order the SND stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish, you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services, all with PCB way. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here I have the bare display with a 12 pin strip connection. But then I have the same display already on a module PCB with male pins, so we could hook it to the breadboard for example. And then I have yet another time the same display, but on a module from WaveShare, with an 8 pin connector and also a voltage level IC, so we could use it with 5 volts as well. And finally I have the screen on an ESP32 based module, together with a touchscreen film, a bunch of other stuff, so it will be ready for programming and make, for example, a smartwatch with it. Ok, so first let's get to know the screen a little bit better. The bare LCD has 12 pins and the pinout is like this. We have the ground, the LED anode and cathode, the supply voltage and the SPI pins. The useful size is around 1.28 inch, which is not much but for a smartwatch, for example, is the perfect size. Way better than my previous attempt of the smartwatch with the one color OLED screen. Now the resolution is of 240 by 240 pixels and it has 65,000 RGB colors. With the naked eye you can't really see the pixels, but here we have the screen under the microscope. And if I zoom in we can see each of the RGB parts of each pixel. And that's pretty cool to see. Now about that resolution, keep in mind that this display is the same as this one, but it was cut in a round shape. So to program it we use the same coordinates as if it were square one, but we will have some areas that won't be showing. Ok, so I will use the one that already has the PCB, so we could connect the display to our microcontroller using male pins. The chip is using a 4 wires SPI communication, where we need the clock pin, the data in, the reset and the chip select pin. We also need to connect a pin for the backlight in order to turn it on or off. Sometimes you might see the pins labeled as this instead of this, but they are the same. I also add a 1K resistor between VCC and the reset pin, because it looks like it works a lot better like that. So let's start with the test using Arduino and then we pass to the ESP32. Connect the display like this to the Arduino using the SPI pins, which are pins 13 and 11 and we'll use pin 10 and 7 for the chip select and DC. Also connect the pin 8 to reset and pin 9 to the backlight. You have a wiki on this display where you can see how to use it with the Raspberry Pi, the STM32 and the Arduino and it also explains how the data is transferred. But at the bottom of that page you can also find some codes, so you could download them. Open the Arduino folder and then you can open the 1.28 inch display example. If you get a warning, it might be for these Chinese comments, but don't worry. You don't need to install any external libraries, because this example is already including all the needed libraries, the fonts and other files. As you can see all the examples are in the void setup, 
and we have a bunch of functions. We can set the brightness of the backlight from 0 to 1000, we can specify the width and the height, but also the screen rotation in degrees, which could be 0, 90, 180 and so on. We can clear the screen, draw circles, lines, text and also select the font of the text. Upload it to the Arduino and let's check it out. There you have it, the example. So we have the logo, we have the needles of the watch, we also have these green points and a black background and some text as you can see with the green color. Now you can go in the code and change the background for example to color which we'll do in a moment. The font text uh, should be a, a bit bigger, you can choose different colors and so on. What I wanted to show you, let me just remove this and place this other screen which is using the same IC. So look, on the other screen it was filling the entire screen but as you can see now it only fills 240 by 240 because it's the same IC but this part of this screen on the round one is cut it out because actually the screen will go like this. You can play around with the functions in the code and change more stuff. For example instead of black we can change the background to another color. With the white background I've seen that the screen started making these lines but with the other module and the same code it was working ok. And I think that's because one module has a voltage level shifter and the other one does not. And online you can find another library from Adafruit. Actually it's based on the same Adafruit GFX, a library that I always use with my LCD displays. Download it and install it to your Arduino directory. Open the graphic test and change the pins for DC and CS to 7 and 10 for the Arduino Uno. And once again we have a bunch of examples that might be useful for text, for colors, lines and shapes. Upload it and check the results. Ok, so here we have more examples, as you can see we have a bunch of colors, different fonts and different texts, different sizes of text, lines, we also have circles, so we have a bunch of examples in the code one by one. So if you want to use one or the other, just check the code, select the one that you want and insert it into your own code. So these kinds of examples are very useful when you are trying to make something from scratch because you have a, a start to start with. Ok, now let's do the same but with the ESP32 and see the speed difference because the Arduino is quite slow. And again, this would be the connections between the ESP32 and the GC9801 LCD. If you remember, the TFT ESPI library is the one that I've used with my homemade MSLA printer and for driving the huge TFT display from my previous video. And this setup is made in an external file that is called user setup. So let's open that file with the text editor. You could also open it with the Arduino in order to see it better. And here we have all the compatible drivers. So let's common this one back and uncommon the GC9801 driver. Then scroll down a little bit and here for the SPI pins, uncommon these pins. Then change the pin numbers according to our schematic. Now save the file and now let's open any example code. So in examples go to the TFT ESPI and open any example that you want. And once again the first example I've uploaded is the graphic test, that's what how it's called. It's the same example as before. But as you can see the first difference that we see with the ESP32 is that the example runs a lot faster. It's the same code but it runs a lot faster because this is 32 bits and a lot more megahertz. Ok, so I've uploaded this example from the same library. This is called an analog gauge and as you can see it simulates a gauge for voltage and milliamps. Obviously you can change this library, you can change it, this example and change it to whatever you want. Maybe temperature, maybe pressure which is something that I will do. Because if you remember in a mailbag video I've shown you this uh, pressure sensor and this could work very easily with Arduino or ESP32 and I want to connect this pressure sensor to my uh, brother's car turbo and just make a gauge for showing the turbo inside of the car. And it should be a pretty basic but also quite awesome project. So that's what I will do using this kind of example. Ok, so here we have yet another example. We have a few icons and then we have all those icons all around. So basically this is called a bitmap from flash example, so basically we have these icons stored on the flash memory and then you can print it. So imagine making the smartwatch or maybe the interface of a website or an app and you want to print that on the screen, you can use these icons or any other, just store them into the flash memory and use them. Pretty cool, it's a good example for all your projects. And obviously we have the example that I've shown you before at the beginning, the watch example 
you can change the background if you want and the colors and not just that but since the ESP has Wi-Fi this is actually the the real time right now because this connects to my Wi-Fi gets the time and then creates this watch looking uh, graphics so yeah pretty cool for sure I will use this to create my the beginner code for my smartwatch we have a bunch of other codes I won't go through all of them but I thought this was quite interesting actually you can use this code with two uh, the LCD displays and make two eyes like this one and you can control the movement with the potentiometer which I haven't connected yet so this is automated and I've seen people online using these screens actually the eye is a little bit small because it's made for a different screen but it looks quite cool so you can make your own robot place this eyes and they can even place like a lens to make the eye a little bit a little bit bigger more realistic and it's quite cool to, to have it and play around if you make maybe a, like a companion robot or something like that I think it's pretty cool okay and now for the final part I found this ESP32 development board which already has the TFT display on top and not just that but it has Wi-Fi Bluetooth external flash a built-in IMU module for accelerations and angles a built-in battery charger with current protection together with a type-c USB connector a UART chip so we can directly program it with a USB connection and literally on top of that we also have a touchscreen layer and it costs less than 20 bucks and when you buy it it also comes with all the pins so you know where is everything connected when you first power on this module you have this default example showing some sort of website simulating a Facebook page analytics and graphs you can even show a keyboard and type text or change the colors so imagine the possibilities and again all the previous examples are compatible and on top of that we could also add a touchscreen control so guys that's how I'm planning to start a new smartwatch project and because now I have more speed a color TFT display and also Wi-Fi the new smartwatch project will be a lot cooler than the previous one which only had Bluetooth it was slow and only had a one color OLED display Stay tuned for more updates and all the detailed information on electrooms.com and the links as always are below. If you consider supporting my work, check my Patreon page and also my shop where you could find all my designs, but also some of the tools and parts I use in my videos. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it and the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons, to you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below. Uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts. All this kind of stuff will support my channel. So thank you very much once again.